Hey, yo, what's decent? I'm all up in your face like a landlord's eviction notice. You have a crazy argument that happened last Sunday on my stream as my opponent's gonna start things off with Ditto as I myself lead up with Mag Mortar. Now, I led up with Mag Mortar just because I was thinking that he would lead up with Golem, noticing on my party that I take super effective damage from four guys on my team, man. Literally two-thirds of my party take super effective damage from Earth-type attacks. Are you serious right now? Is this real life? But anyway, he switches out into Golem, anticipating me to set up the spikes. I actually went for the Thunder Wave because I was thinking, like, I want to catch this Galvantula. It would be probably maybe the perfect time for him to switch into Galvantula, being that I'm confused, set up a substitute or something like that, and then, you know, wreak havoc on the rest of my party for a little bit. But he switches out into Golem, inflicts the Earthquake because he didn't want his sturdy ability to be detrimented by my entry hazards at all. So um, I'm just going to set up another layer of spikes, anticipating him to go for the Sucker Punch, and then afterwards I'm just going to switch up my moves now, just because I'm thinking that on his side, it will be more detrimental to have two layers of spikes than to have one layer of spikes up and a weakened quillfish to deal with. So that's why I finished off that thing with the waterfall at that particular amount of HP. Anyway, in comes the Galvantula now. I'm just going to switch out into my Nidal Queen because I guess a, a, a thunder attack is way too obvious. Nidal Queen resists his other stabs, so I don't really have to worry about Galvantula inflicting too much damage on a Nidal Queen unless he like maybe was choice specs, hidden power, ice, or something like that. Then I have to run tail and switch out again because I do want to set up my rocks. So I do just that on the switch out to Clefable, he's just gonna go for the wish as I switch in my spirit arm, go for the pursuit, insinuate that I am choice banded, which I'm really not really, I'm just, I'm black glasses, but it does a considerable amount of HP, which is very important later on in the game, and I'll point that out. He switches out into Quillfish, which is the best thing he could have done, because not only does the wish afford him HP recovery, but he also scores the Intimidate and set up the spikes, provided that I would want to stay in anyway with my spirit arm. So he goes for this hunt just in case I happen to have the will of on my spirit arm. I'm not that kind of spirit arm at all. I'm all offensive. I'm just going to switch out into my Drudagon, destroy everything in sight with a choice banded outrage. And although it's not as incredible as when we witnessed Mantyke being able to sponge a choice banded outrage coming from Kieran Black, Quillfish is still going to be able to survive a choice banded outrage coming from Drudagon, which is wow. Like, are you kidding me? Anyway, after I finished off the Quillfish, I got a slight premonition that he will bring back in Ditto, copy my form via the imposter ability that it carries, and then retaliate back with an outrage that I'm carrying myself. I am choice banded with 252 in attack as well as HP, as you guys noticed the HP investments that I do have. So I doubt that I was going to be able to outspeed his Ditto, and Ditto just retaliates back with the outrage. In comes in my Quillfish, unexpectedly I do outspeed because I'm so used to Ditto's being choice scar. And I was like, whoa, okay, that's pretty cool. Now I could bring back in Mag Mortar since my Mag Mortar is also carrying the substitute. I don't necessarily have to rely on Confuse Ray because Outrage causes the user to be confused after two or three turns anyway. So he causes his own power fusion, which is great, which means that I could set up another substitute. Hopefully, I have a high probability of him getting smacked in Confusion. And then afterwards, I can go for his Fire Blast and um, Focus Blast because I know that one Focus Blast won't be able to finish it off. So it was like, hey, Hey, Kashif, why would you use Fire Blast? Because I know that it takes either two Fire Blasts or two Focus Blasts from that amount of HP on the Drudagons you guys would see right now to finish that thing off. But I missed my Fire Blast, and in afterwards, he snaps out of confusion and retaliates back with yet another outrage, and then he becomes confused again. So I'm like, all right, you know what? You're Power Fuse. You have a high probability of not being able to hit me, so I'm just going to go into my Kaboo Tops, go for the Rapid Spin, but he reads that pretty nicely, makes a nice switch out into Spirit Arm, then I'm just locked onto, well, not really locked onto rapid spin, but made to look like a fool doing a rapid spin on a ghost type. Anyway, he burns me! Damn it! Ah, uh, psych! I got the lumberry. And then afterwards, he sucker punches, which I'm so grateful for, because I have the weak armor as opposed to having a swift swim, so my speed increases. And as long as Galvantula doesn't, like, have a choice scarf, I should be able to outspeed that, too. So I don't have to worry about doing uh, Aqua Jet, thanks to him, really. I could just go for the waterfall, outspeed it, and finish the Galvantula Vegetable off, and it's all thanks to his spirit arm using Sucker Punch on my Kabutops. That's amazing. Thank you so much, buddy. And anyway, like I said earlier in the video, that damage output with Spirit Arm's pursuit was very crucial because it allowed me to one shot the Clefable with the Stone Edge. And afterwards, Ditto comes in and dies to entry hazard. So that was a great game, viewers. What you doing?
Kick it down. 